All right, Paul, we're live. Um, first and foremost, let me thank you so much for taking time out of your super hectic schedule. For those who don't know, um, you do have tons of obligations outside of training. Uh, I know just a couple weeks ago you were in Orlando doing some speaking arrangements, Tennessee, D.C., Chicago. I feel like you're all over the place. So um, with that said, thanks again for taking uh, some time out of your day to talk to us about your day-to-day -day grind. Um, with that said, and for those who don't know, I had posted I being, I represent Artican, um, on Twitter about a couple weeks ago, asking the people if they could hear one thing about you, what would they want? Uh, I mentioned your um, your day-to-day -day grind, your transition from college collegiate to pro, uh, and a few other things, but tons of people came back and asked. They want to know more about your day-to-day -day grind. What are you doing from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed? So. Uh, with that said, I'm kind of going to leave a, a blank door open and um, talk about, in a nutshell, and I know it's going to be sort of different depending on where you are in the season, but on a typical day, what does uh, the life of Paul Chalimo look like? Yeah, um, so I usually wake up in the morning and uh, go for a run and report to the unit and see what they have me on the schedule to do and then uh after that we do a video <laughs> for those for those who don't know that's actually paul's wife brenda uh, i'm pretty sure she was unaware we were doing a, a little interview so no big deal but uh she yeah wants to, she wants to steal the show man <laughs> she wants to steal the show. that's perfect that actually made the video a little bit better so go uh yeah. go ahead you uh you report to your unit you're given your assignment um yeah yeah so i Usually go for a run in the morning and uh, then after that, report the unit and see what they have for me. If uh, usually I go there and sometimes they just have me like do little things and I leave and then go get ready for the second run or maybe go to the gym. So it just depends on the schedule and depends on what they need me to do urgently and also, and also like. I do a lot of, mil I sometimes have to do military classes. Like for example, the other day I was at the base till like nine at night, you know, like trying to make sure I catch up because after the world, before the world championships, I wasn't able to, they didn't want me to do, they didn't want me to be at the base to do a lot of things because I needed to focus on, on the world championship, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, because if I'm not able to focus and do good in world championships, then, it uh, the W cap loses its goal, you know. Yep. No, for sure. So we have, yeah, we have to perform so that W cap has to be there and uh, it has to have a reason. We have to have a reason why W cap is there. Since we, when we perform good, that's 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 all that matters, you know. No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And W cap is growing. Um, I feel like every we have a uh, Lawi Lalang just joined the team, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Lau Lang just joined the team and Eli Drudo, you know, like eight hundred yep. meter guy. And yep, yep. you know what that means, man. That yeah. means more speed. W, bro. w Cap is like it's taken over. It once was maybe Oregon Project or Bowerman Track Club. And I'll come out here on the mic and say, um, W Cap is like the strongest club in the United States. And how much of a role would you say that's played in part to your success in achieving your silver medal? Uh, and your bronze medal in the last two championships? You know, we, the thing is we work together, you know, W Cup and ADP, we work together and uh, we train together. You know, the type of training that we do is intense. It's crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. Right now it's off season, but if I send you the type of training that I'm supposed to do off season, <laughs> I'm always wondering, you know, like I always, I always, I always like, I always tell Scott, are you out of your mind, man? I'm supposed to have fun, you know? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So like the type of training that he gives me, it's crazy, you know, sometimes it's like, it's like, I mean, good thing it's we're able to do heavy loads of training, but also we're able to recover well and recovery is serious. And, and, and good thing is I survived because I don't know, I really know how to listen to my body and, mm -hmm. And if my body tells me like, hey, you need to go do a long run in the afternoon. I'm like, well, like today. Today I woke up late and I, it's a Sunday, you know, like lazy Sunday. I woke up late and 
I just didn't want to put things in my mind, like put schedule in my mind. I just sat down on the couch till like when my body clicked, it's like, oh, it's time to go for a long run. And I ended up leaving my door at 2 p.m. for a long run. I'm going to stop so, you on that because as long as I've known you, I think there is not one person I've ever come across that truly is more dialed into their body than you. So it kind of aligned with the day-to-day -day grind, really being able to understand your body and when able to actually listen to it when it says, hey, we need to go easy or today we need to take the day off um, or today we just need to hammer. Um, talk more about listening to your body because I've seen you cut workouts short because you didn't feel good. I've seen you extend workouts because you felt great. I've seen you go easy on days you felt hard or easy on days you just didn't have it. Um, you are very, very, very well in tune with your body. Is that something that you've picked up over the years or you've just a trait or talk more about listening to your body? Because some people just don't. You know, the coach gives them a, a workout um, and they follow that thing like it's, like it's the Bible. Yeah. Uh, for me, sometimes is the more you listen to your body, you have like you're in tune to your body. You know, the body takes care of you and the body tells you what you got to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So usually if my body tells me I need to go this easy run today, 530 mile pace, you know? Easy run, 530 mile. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to go out there and do like 530 mile pace mm -hmm. for a couple of miles still where I feel like my body is giving up, you know? Yep. Wow. And yeah, and also like if my body tells me you need to go seven minutes a mile, well, it was, it's time to go seven minutes a mile if my body tells me to do that. And and usually I'm really in tune with my body and I, as years goes as years have gone by, I've I've realized it really works and you just have to really, really listen to your body. If your body tells you like it's it's no time to push because I won Manchester. I won Manchester Road Race, and remember, I didn't do the schedule. Was four hundred times twenty on Tuesday. Okay, four hundred times twenty. Two days prior to Manchester. No, no, no. It's the other Tuesday, the previous Tuesday, a week okay. before. A week before. Okay. Yeah, a week before, and uh, my hamstring was bothering me. You know. Yep. And yeah. It, I did some needling and my hamstring was bothering me. So we just had to scratch the workout, you know. And does that bother you mentally? Or does that like psycholog psychologically get to you? Or do you feel like it's just part of the process and go with the flow? Um, some people, you know, when they miss a workout, it's like, all right, I'll do it tomorrow. Or like, is that day behind or are you going to make that up? Yeah. Uh, my goal is usually like, as I said, is how I feel, how my body feels. So. When I feel like, for example, I was supposed to do a workout on Tuesday and I didn't have it. You know, I felt like it was, it was too soon after getting needles, you know, on a Sunday, yep. Yep. needling. And then I I'm just gonna, said, I'm going to stop you real quick before some people take needles too far. Needles, you're referring to your, uh, the massage therapy. Um, yeah. The needling, yeah. needling, the needling, you know, the needling. Yep. Therapy, Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Not the other needle, man. No, Not for sure. Other. I know you're, I know you're all about, you actually, you're a huge advocate for clean sport. And that's another day, another talk. Um, that's something that uh, I'm glad you're vocal about because there is um, not enough, uh, yeah, not enough clean athletes out there. But yeah. anyways, sorry to disturb you. So you, you scratched that workout on Tuesday. Uh, and did you ever make that up or did you get up to it a couple of yeah, days later? So, yeah, so I came back on Wednesday. I wasn't feeling it, and we just had to scratch the whole workout till Friday. And Friday, I did the three mile tempo, and then Tuesday pre race, and I went to the race, and surprisingly, I felt way better. So sometimes yeah. is sometimes is some injuries and some tightness and soreness. It's your body telling you you gotta get more recovery or do more recovery stuffs to. So that you can bounce back, you know. Mm -hmm. And since, so, we're, since we're talking about massage therapy, um, how vital would you say that's a part of your success, or how often do you implement that into your training uh, out of a week? Man, unlimited. I get unlimited massage. I get like a lot of, you know, like you know, like a lot of people tell me you like massage a lot, you know. Yeah. But massage is important for recovery. And I'm also, I live with the massage masseuse, Kiplimo Chimera, you know. 
Yep, yep. So he takes okay. care of you. Yeah, we live together. So I had to, I had to, I had to convince him, convince him to come live with me. And now he came, he's living with me, and uh, it's Talk just amazing. You know? Perk, man, massage therapist at your own doorstep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so I live with Kip, and next year should be a good year, you know. So. Sweet. Um, how are we doing on time? Just 10 minutes. Cool. Let's talk about, I'm going to backtrack and look at the little variables outside of training. And then we'll dive into some of your training specifically. Uh, it's not always just training that separates the best from elite. Um, it's the little variables. It's the little things. What would you say that you do that others don't do that separates you uh, from the podium? Yeah, one of the big things, as I said before, is listening to my body, you know, and also, and also the other big thing about me is this. So true. I was actually going to save that to the end because you're on another, you're on another, another mindset when it comes to tapping into your, uh, your psyche. Um, but since we're here, we're there, let's talk about it. How are you able to dig and not only dig, but show up when it counts. Like, I don't know how much people know about your background, but you have a N N N double N A I A championship title. You were second in the 5K in 2012 in NCAA's behind uh, the, yeah, Canadian, yeah. the Canadian yeah. Kim Levins. Yeah. yeah. Um, 2013, you were second again in the 5K behind Lowy. Um, and then 2000, I mean, you're following well, yeah, I disappear. You went <laughs> following you, you disappeared. You know what? We're, what happened that year? Yeah, I mean, uh, something wasn't clicking me and the coach, and I mean, it's just a long story, and we and I just get into it. Yes, so yeah. cool. Then you join WCAP. Um, next thing you know, things start to click. You have very Shadrach Kipchichir becomes your teammate, um, and that, following along, now you're 2016 Olympic silver medalist. You're a U.S. indoor champ. Speaking of U.S. Uh, U.S. outdoor champ, where you set the championship record. You go to Worlds and you hit a bronze. It's like you have been winning and at least on the podium for as long as you've been running. So a lot of it, obviously, you're back to your psychological mindset. What is it? What can you pass on to others that you were able to dig so much deeper or take in so much more pain than others? You know, usually... I go with my slogan, you know, go out or suffer the rest of your life, you know? Yep, no, you very know, true. You know, I'm someone I've decided, I know, I know a lot of people don't think about this and everything, but me and running, I decided one thing. If I'm not going to, I'm never going to, if running is not going to kill me, I'm going to kill the running. Yeah, so very good. That's so another know. quote. That's another quote. I might have to steal yeah. that one. So I don't know who will die. So I'll just... Uh, it's just my mentality, you know, and I go out there, I'm ready, I'm ready to die out there and I'm ready like for my running, like do as much as I can. Yeah. It's so funny. That's, yeah. I, I spend a lot of time on social media for Articon and uh, I'm on these kids accounts that, that follow my page. And it's amazing how many of them have taken that quote and put it as their, uh, their little caption on their page, go harder stuff for the rest of your life. With that said, you've become an icon and a mentor, not maybe a mentor, but a, a role model for so many people. How, um, how much does that mean to you? Yeah, it really means a lot to me. You know, I usually say, I usually say talent without support is zero. It's useless, zero. Yeah. You know, if you are talented and you're not able to help other people, it's, uh, it's useless, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I usually usually want to do my best and motivate all the young people out there, you know? That's awesome. Make them believe, make them believe that nothing is impossible, you know? No, they can sure. always break the barriers and everything. So That's awesome. So let's go back. Let's talk about some of the uh, some little things that maybe people can pick up from you whether it works for them or whether it just works for you. But um, cuz I really want to dive into your day-to-day, hour by hour lifestyle uh as an olympian athlete as an olympic medalist athlete when it comes to a workout how often do you eat prior to the workout and what do you eat prior to the workout 
Um, weird. I don't eat anything before I walk out. You don't eat anything. Now, I mean, most of your workouts are first thing in the morning. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know you're supposed to. I know you're supposed to like eat before I walk out, but uh, mm -hmm. most of my workouts are like eight in the morning, and I just. Uh, what about race day? Like the Olympic Games, no. or like no. those races are in the evening. Do you? Do, what do you do? Oh yeah. Yeah, I do. I usually eat like light meals, like spaghetti or rice, you know. Okay. Something, you know, like it's 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 really hard to go like with a stomach, like stomach, like metabolism, you know. Like you just have to make sure, like you you can pro, like you have enough in your body that you don't struggle, you know. Like you don't have stomach and gut problems, you know. True. Very true. So I usually prefer being light as light as I can mm -hmm. than being heavy, you know. Yeah. So the more food, the more food that I put in my stomach or fluids in the morning or something, it weighs more, you know, it's heavy and I have to carry all that weight. Yeah. You know, yeah. sometimes it's crazy. It's an estimated, but food can be like food and water can account to like one or two pounds. True. Very true. Yeah. So I usually want to feel like as light as I can and, and just also like gut problems. So I don't take anything before a race and I'm also like, I, I hit, Usually I take my food really late, you know? Mm. Yeah. So I guess that's the difference. I take my food really late. I take dinner really late, like eight, nine, ten PM, you know? Wow. Wow. So, so what time what time's uh, lunch? I eat so I come back from training and uh I get brunch, you know, like I just get late breakfast. Usually I do my schedule is weird, you know. I get <laughs> I get back home at like eleven. Yep. I get a cup of pancakes and tea, a cup of tea, you know, mm. and then around three, four, okay. two, three, usually two, around two. Yeah. So 11 and then two o'clock, two o'clock, I get like a light meal or like a lunch, depending on when I'm going to go run. If I'm going to go run like later at five in the evening, gotcha. I get a heavy meal at two o'clock. But if I go run like, like let's say four or four or five, four, four to four to four thirty, I get like light meal, like spaghetti, and then go maybe take a nap after that. After the nap, wake up, take a light meal, and then get ready, for, wait for the run, and then go for the run an hour how, later. How often do you double? I double three times a week. Three times a week. And that would be the same day as workout day? Yeah. yeah, usually when I'm on season, I try double on Tuesday, I double on Wednesday, and I double on Friday because... I just don't like going into a workout not feeling it. I have to be fresh as much as I can in a workout because if I go to a workout, I'm tired, it's useless. It's zero work, you know? Yeah. It's useless you are struggling in a workout and your body just gets the... Your body your body is not able to to get to the limits that you you, you expect to get, you yeah. know? Sure. So your body is going to... You're going to have a pl plateau, you know? That's why a lot of... Some people have plateau, you know? Mm -hmm. It's because... It's because, like, they do, maybe they do a lot of mileage. They don't too focus much. on recovery. And I usually say too much mileage is junk mileage, you know? Oh, that's so true. And one of your mentors, Bernard Lagat, I mean, he's been successful for so many years. Um, what has he passed down to you as far as longevity and having a career that plays out to you being then participating in, say, maybe the 2028 Olympics in the marathon or whatnot? Um, what does he say? To, to live a career as long as his. You know, like that is always, he's always like talking to me and motivating me every time. And yeah, he knows, he knows eventually I'm going to break his American record in the 5k. You know, that's all he says. That's <laughs> all he says. I was going to ask you that question at the very end of this, but again, you beat me to it. Um, we're going to dive into it. 1253. What's the American record? 1253. Yeah, 1253. I mean, you've, You've got everything except a gold medal. I'm almost confident that's only just going to happen in the near future. But 1253, people want to see that. Like, they want to see that broken. When, are, when do you plan on going after it? When can we expect to see that? Um, obviously, your fitness indicates you're there. Um, when can we see Paul Chalimo chase the 5K American record? Yeah, so definitely, definitely, the uh, Diamond League schedule is out, you know, okay. and it looks really good. It favors me, you know. Yep. 
So, yeah, I mean, it's, so a, it's a non-world championship year. Um, you are going to do indoors, you said. Uh, yes. Is there a specific target race? Uh, maybe I'm sure you have, need to sit down and talk with uh, the coach about it, but have you, have you spoken yet with Scott about a specific race that you'd like to get after? Yeah, actually, he sent me. He was the one who sent me the Diamond League schedule for next year, and uh, he sent me the 5K. And I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna go based on how I feel, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I don't wanna put, I don't wanna put schedules on my mind, you know. If I put schedules on my mind and put too much pressure on my mind, I'll just train till when I feel like I'm really ready for it, you know. Yep. So yep. I'll, I'll, I'll make make sure I strike it when I'm hot. So I think. Good gates would be Lausanne next year. I've never been to Lausanne, but oh, okay. I've seen the run fast times in Lausanne. So definitely Lausanne is one of the one of the one of the meets I'm thinking about, and uh, should be fun. You know, go big goal next year, break the American record. Great, great goal, break the American record. Good goal, break 13 minutes. Yeah, so, no, for sure. In that. Well, cool. Let's uh, let's talk about one more thing, and then I'll let you go. As far as uh, rest, you do talk you do talk about making sure you're really rested leading up into your runs. You today you did your long run at two o'clock in the afternoon. How many hours a night do you uh, do you get of sleep? Um, and maybe you get a little, and you take a lot of naps every day. But um, talk about how much rest you do. Good question. You know, you know, I'm like uh, I'll say. I'm like a lion, you know? The lion sleeps pretty much the whole day, you yeah. know? Okay. <laughs> when it's time to chase the gazelle or the antelope, yeah. it's when it's time to look for food, the lion is always aggressive, you know? Okay. So you rest, you rest a lot throughout the day. You play a lot of, you play a lot of FIFA. Yeah, so I usually, yeah, usually period, if, if it's a recovery day, Nothing less than nine, nine hours. Yep. Nine yep. hours is always on my schedule. Okay. If I feel I'm really tired, 10 hours, you know? Yeah. Nothing, nothing less, you know? I don't, I don't deal with seven hours or less. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, how, uh, how much do you play FIFA? Yeah, I play FIFA, I play FIFA a lot. I play FIFA a lot. Right now, even I'm about to play a couple of games in FIFA. What's your username? Tell everyone your username. Keep the boy eleven eighty six K I P K E M B O I eleven eighty six. All right. But for, those, for those who don't know, Paul's actually very, very good in FIFA. So um, I'll make sure I put his username up in the in the comments so you guys can give him a shot. Maybe he'll add you. Uh, you've played quite a few people over the year. Who would you say is your toughest opponent? Man, Diego Estrada, the guy that <laughs> Diego Estrada, man. Diego Estrada is like, you know, I like Diego. I like playing Diego Estrada because it never gets boring. I don't know what Diego does, but you can beat him like five games in a row. Yeah. You think like you're dominating, he gets back to you and he starts like playing like crazy. So that's something with him. It's like his game fluctuates a lot, and it doesn't. It never gets boring. Who's your team? Because if you have someone that if you have someone that you beat every day, yeah, get it, it gets, gets boring. boring. Yeah, and also like, do you feel that way on the track? Do you feel that way on the track, beating the same yeah. opponents every day? <laughs> yeah, if you if you get beat every day, you know, like that's the thing. You know, like I try so hard when I play Mo Farah, I try so hard not to lose to him. Yeah. No, hey, you put up you put up a hell of a show. Looks like you um and hopefully you're the new face of track and field. I know I've mentioned that to you in the past. Um who with that said, who do you see as your competition at the global stage? Like it was practically Mo. Um I know Edris was right there. Um but who do you view as your competition? Uh I would say it's the ships and the Olympics, you know. So mm -hmm. I would say Mukta Redris, you know, definitely Mukta Redris and uh, oh, you there? 
or sell my, I mean, I'll just, uh, I'm not worried about anyone. I'm just ready to go for, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. I want to test, I just want to test my limits and see. I want to test and see what my body can do, you know? Yep, yep. yep. Love it. Hey, you know what? I don't want to hold you up too much longer. I know it's uh, it's only 6 o'clock over there, but I greatly appreciate the 30 minutes. If, if we can pass on one tip, um, well, you know, we'll do two. We'll do two. Two tips for everyone watching, all the kids that idolize you, all the college kids that want to be a professional, want to be on the podium in the Olympics. What do you pass on to them? Yeah, um, I would say like if you are if you are big if you are if you are really serious about change, you know, yeah, you want to improve in running and you are serious about change. Don't just sit there and expect and talk about goals without without putting in the putting, work. You gotta put in work, and if you're serious about change, you gotta go through uncomfortable situations. Because the uncomfortable situations that you go through is what makes you a champion, you know? If you're not willing to go through uncomfortable situations, there's no way you're gonna, you, there's no way you're gonna break the barriers that you think of, you know? So, and I would say the other thing is just eat well, you know? Mm -hmm. And then sleep well, listen to your body, you know? Yep. Train smart, you know? Train smart, you know? And then if, it's, if your body feels if your body feels like it can go faster, you know, just control it based on how you feel. If your body feels like you're tired, just do it. You know, work out and I mean, go for it and just do a lot of recovery if you can. And also, the last big thing is live a stress-free life. Don't put too much stress in yourself. If you don't so, break the if you don't break the barriers. Don't make it a stress. Don't don't stress about it because running is a spot whereby you have to be really, really patient. I've been through a lot of things. Mm. I've known a lot of things. And even if I don't break 13 minutes next year, I will still be thirsty because I know what running takes, you know, what it takes to break barriers in running. Absolutely. Oh, Paul, you're so fun to talk to um cool hey thank you so much i'll uh i'll follow up with you i definitely want to make this a series i know i've spoke about in the past there's four different topics i like to chew, talk about um so hopefully we can catch up in the near future and go for go from there definitely anytime anytime all right man hey we have a good night and we'll talk to you soon all right talk to you later man later all right all right